Welcome to Yacht Crew Vlogs, where we tell the stories of those in the yachting industry. A behind-the-scenes look that discovers the individuals in the industry, their history, their passions, and what inspires them to do what they do. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Yacht Crew Vlogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Ria. I am your host, and I'm very pleased to welcome the CEO of the PYA, Christoph. How are you? I'm good, Ria. It's good to be back. Thank you. The reason that we are here today is because yachting is now under the spotlight. There's a lot that needs to change. Well, there is a lot that will change. I think yachting as we knew it, uh, even eight months ago, is over. Um, you know, an organization like the PYA, we see ourselves as a, an early warning system for the industry. Okay, we are the representative association for crew. So we have a foot in the industry and a foot in the outside world. One of the things we did in the past couple of years is to develop all our outreach and representative work with authorities, decision makers, and anybody whose decisions and regulation could impact the yachting industry. So in that sense, you know, we have a foot outside of the industry. And just to give you an example, before the oligarch, because this is what we are talking about, you know, between, before the, the Russian uh, situation and the uh, seizing of the uh, yacht of the oligarchs, at the PYA office, whenever we would get calls from mainstream journalists, it would be the Sun or the Daily Mail in the, in the UK, the oligarchs have put yachting on the radar screen of public opinion. The calls we've got from journalists since then are CNN, the BBC, the Financial Times, you cannot not answer. Before the oligarchs, people in the street, you know, I usually, I usually use members of my families, they, had a, they knew about yachting, yeah, yachting exists but they didn't have a view one way or the other. Since the oligarchs, since we've been put in the court of public opinion as an industry, everybody in the street has a view on yachting. So in that way, I think that collectively, very soon, even though up until now we were a discrete industry, we are going to have to maybe get our act together and get ready to answer to the general public and be accountable to the public for what we do, who we are, and how we do it. Well, just the other day, you had an NGO show up at a marina. Goodness, Miria, this is actually to me a very, just one of the, you know, before a storm hits, you get warning signals, the birds flying out, the wind and the heat coming up. And I think we are, we've seen recently a number of signals that make me think that something's coming. Um, since the issue of the oligarch, I mean, one little thing, the first thing that I started noticing is in 2023, the maritime sector is to be included into the European uh, Union emissions trading scheme. So that's, you know, commercial. Yachting, fishing vessels and support vessels are excluded. Well, there is a powerful environmental lobby group in Brussels that is lobbying actively for yachting to be included. That's the first thing. Second thing, in July this year, there has been a private initiative launched to track the CO2 emissions of yachts, just like, you know, another initiative is tracking CO2 emissions from uh, from uh, private airplanes and that uh, Twitter account in two months got close to 10,000 followers, another signal. And um, the last signal is the one that you just mentioned uh, last Saturday, uh, an environmental group, you know, blocked the entrance of the Quai des Milliardaires in uh, Port Vauban. And, uh, oh, you know, there were only 10 of them and it only lasted an hour. And I remember during the Monaco Yacht Show discussing that with some people and people saying, well, it's a one off, you know, it will die off. I think it's only the beginning. I think it's only the beginning. I used to work for industries, sometimes controversial, but at least used to be accountable to the public uh, as to what they do and their very being. The yachting, in, like the oil and gas industry and energy industries, uh, the yachting industry, for all sorts of reasons, we've been very discreet, we've been left alone. Uh, we need very soon to start gathering data 
to be able to justify to the public our license to operate. We all say that, you know, the economic impact of yachting is very beneficial. Where, where is the data? That's the first thing. But jobs alone don't suffice anymore. We need to be accountable as regards to the environment, sustainable development, and in many other, many other ways as well. Do you think that perhaps some of this negative outlook is a result of the fact that now we see, for example, in the UK, people are going to be deciding between food or heat this coming winter. The rates of inflation have gone through the absolute roof. We have been inundated with the news that the wealthy have gotten wealthier, the poor have gotten poorer, people have lost their homes, their jobs through all the pandemic. And we just kept hearing about how many more multimillionaires were made. Do you think this is a reason why people are paying more attention now that it's come to light through the Russian-Ukraine war? I think a yacht is a symbol. I think yachting is becoming a symbol. Uh, I think we are getting, getting into something that as an industry we've never had to grapple with. Um, there is a very big difference between facts and on the one hand and emotion and passion on the other hand. Uh, you cannot fight a communication situation with facts alone. It's all driven by emotion and passion. I'll just give you a very small example. I used to work for the nuclear industry and there was an article in the US magazine about a little girl with a photo of this beautiful nine-year-old who was developing cancer. And the last three lines of the article was, by the way, she lives, you know, five miles from a nuclear power station. The nuclear industry spent millions developing a huge study proving and demonstrating that the cancer had no uh, relations to the fact that the nuclear power station was nearby. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. You cannot, you know, the photo of a nine-year-old child dying of cancer you cannot win that argument. And I'm afraid that with the, for instance, energy industries, people can be against nuclear or coal power station, but they can relate to that. They know that a coal power station generates electricity for heating or cooling. A yacht, they have the general public has difficulties relating to, 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 to the yacht because it doesn't mean anything to them. And unfortunately, Nowadays, we are fighting battles of symbols driven by emotion and passion. Um, and I hope your next question is not going to be, how can we win this battle? Because I have no idea. Let's go to sustainability. We have seen demands for the shipping industry. They're looking for net zero emissions by 2050 now. In the past, and actually within the last year, there was also a lot of greenwashing done. We're going to offset. We're talking countries. The U.S., for example, is calling for zero carbon emissions by 2050 with no offsetting. Do you think yachting is taking this on board? Because as you mentioned, perhaps at this moment, they're not being mentioned, but there are powerful forces putting this forward that they should be. Is this something Yannick really needs to wake up to now? Well, I think to a certain extent, people are aware in our industry, but uh, greenwashing won't fly. And uh, I'm afraid that some people might not realize that what they might be considering could be perceived as greenwashing. Let me just give you a couple of facts. Um, a couple of weeks ago, before the Monaco Yacht Show, we met, I, well, the PYA, we met with uh, the French uh, Affaires Maritimes, you know, the maritime authorities. And uh, living in near Cannes, I can see all the, you know, cruise liners and passenger ships, you know, sitting uh, for days on end in the Bay of Cannes with, uh, you know, the plume of smoke going up. And uh, the French Affaires Maritime two weeks ago got the cruise companies together to sign a pledge for emission reduction. The first thing I asked them, you know, as the Affaires Maritimes is, look, voluntary agreements don't work anymore. And they said, no, it's not a voluntary agreement. They are pledging to reduce with measurable uh, data, which will be verified by third parties. This is very serious. On the other hand of the spectrum, during the Monaco Yacht Show, I discussed with various 
people sustainable development initiatives that they are planning to launch in the yachting industry and I'm 57 years old I'm a pretty I'm an old guy now but uh, when I was a, a baby professional one of my first job was to work with the United Nations in 1992 in developing agenda 21 which was a 700 page document which is the bible for sustainable development people need to realize and must realize that to today a sustainable development report is done exactly like a financial report. So, you know, in a financial report, there are standards, expected data, expected information. It is the same for sustainable development. And I would strongly advise any organization in your team uh, planning to develop sustainable development practices and whatever to link up with the expert sustainable development industry out there. Because again, um, Sustainable development and environmental reporting must be done, not starting from what we can do, but what is expected of us from the outside world. Let's talk about diversity. Are we whitewashing? Are we, as an industry, saying, yes, we hashtag diversity because you see it absolutely everywhere and everyone and their dog is, is signing a pledge, but there's been no changes. What is the future for that? Because they're going to get called out. Are we getting political here? I mean, look, yes. I mean, of course, we all want diversity. Look, I can answer as Christophe Bourillon, CEO of the PYA, or as a human being. And I would tend to say that as both individuals, I would say yes. But to me, what is important is good working conditions for all. And at the PYA, we never hear of you know, just like you never hear of trains that arrive on time, you only hear about trains that arrive late. Most of the yachting industry, you know, they're good crew, good captain, good, good boats, good working conditions. But at the PYA, just, just because of what we are, we get people coming through the doors who've had problems, welfare, working condition, abuse, and all that. And to me, the number one priority is good working conditions for all. And that's the first thing. And the second thing is, just like I wouldn't want to go greenwashing, I wouldn't want, I mean, in terms of the environment, of course, I don't have time for washing of any time. But of course, we need and we must all give everybody a chance. We have a brand new generation of yachties coming up, crew, owners, etc. The wealth has been redistributed. Where do we see it going? We have a generation that are very politically aware. They are very environmentally aware. They are very aware of the people around them, the human side as well. So where do you see it going? Um, I never thought I would say that because I still don't know what I'll do when I grow up and I don't consider myself to be one of the old guys, but yeah, I'm still 50, 57 and I'm seeing changes happening in the industry. And I put a lot of hopes on the new generation. As we've seen, you know, the yachting industry again is a fairly young industry compared to oil and gas and the others. We're a 50 year old industry. Yeah. And we are, there are two revolutions we are going through right now. The first one we've discussed, which is, you know, we are now in the court of public opinion, a discrete yachting industry, something of the past. And the second uh, revolution we are going through. And again, as a Frenchman, I much prefer evolution to revolution, but this is a revolution. Um, a new generation is taking over. As you rightly said, you know, now we're having millennials becoming captains and, you know, the old experience captains are retiring. I mean, you know, that that's to me that that's an issue as well, because, you know, I, I speak to captains every day and I see a lot of experience in, you know, experienced captains that, that we're going to be losing. But I'm putting a lot of hope in the young generation. For instance, I'll give you an example. As I said, uh, one of my first job was to work on sustainable development criteria for the United Nations. But I had to be force fed sustainable development. You know, it was not uh, in my DNA. Well, the new generation, it's part of their life. They grew up on that. Um, when we were working with the French authorities to find alternative solutions to the uh, Posidonia regulation, and I remember communicating to the PYA members about, you know, there is this, uh, you know, Posidonia needs to be protected. They all came back to me saying, Christophe, we know what Posidonia is and we know we need to protect it. This to protect it, this is our livelihood. And just like we are having younger crew, a younger generation becoming crew, owners are getting younger as well. 
And the yachts that are being built nowadays are not necessarily the same as yesterday. You know, we've heard of the Explorer yachts. There is also, I've heard, and as a journalist, you may know more about me than, than me about that, um, a yacht being built uh, or a ship being built to do uh, humanitarian work. And the owner will be by, you know, re re recruiting a crew, a yacht crew, but also, you know, medical trained people and stuff like that. So the face of the yachting industry is definitely changing. And to me, this is what will provide the solution, the the evolution solution to the revolution we are going through. We've seen a lot of very, very tone deaf social media posts over the past year in regards to yachting. Is that something that the industry needs to think about, needs to take care about, and perhaps set out a different image than they would normally have done? I would say yes, 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 and yes. Um... It takes, so the yachting industry has an image. Our public image is that of a glamorous industry. We, you know, we have the image, you know, like all of, of a luxury, luxury industry, which is what we have. Uh, the benefits to society are definitely there, positive. It's up to us to show them. But at the end of the day, a good image takes years to build. A bad image takes days, sometimes hours to create. And again, collectively, you, you ask the question, what can the individuals do? We are collectively responsible for the image of yachting, but it is at the individual level that uh, we are all going to contribute to developing strengthening and nurturing the image of your team. And at the end of the day, again, I'm very sorry if I've spoken about, you know, negative issues and welfare and sometimes that, you know, we see in this industry, but it's still, I think, one of the last industry where you can still have an adventure. You can mix career with adventure. You meet fantastic people. I mean, we've discussed offline, you know, I've had many different, I mean, not many, but different jobs in different industries and I've never worked for such an exciting industry as your team. So we should all feel proud of the industry we work in and, uh, and just relay the world. I have been accused of, of shining a negative light on the industry in the past, but I am the same as you in the fact that I believe there's you know, an absolutely amazing industry out there filled with absolutely amazing people. Unfortunately, yachting has avoided the pitfalls that every other industry on the face of the regular planet <laughs> um, has, has tripped over in the past, but they're not avoiding it anymore. So when those questions are asked and when I call people to task, it's nothing that every other industry hasn't been faced with for decades. It's just now yachting is finally getting a taste of that and they're not used to it and they're not prepared for it. Well, you are ever so right with that. And let me just make a little comment. It's a follow-up comment to what I said earlier. Okay, so the PYA as an association, I said we have a foot in the industry, a foot outside the industry. We are an early warning system. As a journalist specialized in the yachting industry, you, I would tend to think that you play a bit of a similar role you are asking internally the questions that we probably ought to be asking ourselves. And I'd rather we deal with the issues inside the family than in the, you know, in the public space. Um, and I don't know what kind of, you know, flack you got from some people rega regarding some of the questions you asked, but let, and that's the comment I wanted to make. Before eight months ago, the oligarch thingy, uh, you know, we had type of media, like we call it the gutter press that were calling us and they just wanted, you know, the sensational and the, and, and the buzz. So we would not respond since the oligarch thing. It's been okay. BBC, the Economist, the CNN, the FT and, and you name it. You cannot ignore these people. And I've seen a trend in this past month happening. Now, investigative journalists from the mainstream media are taking a look at the industry and 
we all collectively want to make sure that we will be able to answer any question any of those mainstream investigative journalists will want to ask of us. We are now in the court of public opinion. Yeah. Well, we'll see how this progresses because once you start being investigated, a PR agency for the industry is not going to cut it anymore because no matter how much lipstick you put on it, they're going to find the base color, period. That's what investigative journalists get paid to do. That's what they're good at. Yeah, I think, you know, perhaps yachting really does need to take a look at itself. It does need to make more conscious choices. Well, now that we are in the court of public opinion and now that as an industry, we need to be accountable to the public, we need to learn a new, a whole new language yeah. with new codes. Um, I'll give you an example. During the Monaco Yacht Show, you know, I've been asking various companies and whatever, you know, what could we do? Or what do you think you could do to, to show uh, progress? And one of the expression I, uh, I, I got a few, several times, was, oh, we'll develop a voluntary agreement. Well, voluntary agreements might have worked 20 years ago. Nowadays, they don't. A voluntary agreement without teeth, that means sanction, if you don't do what you said you'd do, doesn't fly. And the alternative is regulation. So again, we're all talking, you know, high level helicopter view here, but and I've seen it time and time again as, you know, working for trade association, industries that don't comply with what is publicly expected of them get regulated yeah. or taxed. We we'll probably get regulated because tax is less of a problem in our industry than uh, in other industries. But before I forget, you know, we were discussing hopes, you know, for the first part of this interview, we discussed problems, issues and hopes. And a couple of hopes I mentioned, uh, you know, um, and, uh, you know, public accountability, the new generation in owners and in crew. But also we are in an industry where um, spending power of owners can do marvels. I will not name names, but there are a couple of yacht owners that have been mentioned in the media and the, the emissions of their yachts have been associated directly with the owner. These owners, if you read that, are the individuals who emit the most in the world. Well, if I was one of these owners, I would tell my people, make my yacht cleaner now. And they have ways of investing right now on new technologies. And maybe I am dreaming, but who knows, maybe one day yachting will be to maritime what Formula One is to cars, where money invested into Formula One innovation then trickles down to my car and your car. You never know. There might be some innovation which we might first see on yacht, which will then become mainstream in the maritime of the future. To me, that would be a good deed for the yachting industry. Look, realistically, walk the walk. You don't need to pay anything extra. You don't need to hire anybody extra. You don't need to be out there trying to convince the world that yachting is great because it really is great. Just do what's right. It's just be great. Unlike anywhere else in any other industry, this industry has the means and the know-how and the expertise to be a leader in industries around the world. Be the leader, show the world. And, and I believe it's possible. It's Absolutely. just, it needs to change. It needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people need to do and not talk. Yes. Do it, don't talk about it. Right, Christoph, it's been a pleasure as per always. Thank you, pleasure was mine, Ria. And we'll make sure to provide all of the PYA's information below this interview when it airs, as well as Christoph's, if you want to get in touch with him and ask him any questions because he's always there. And Ria, indeed, do feel free to put my personal phone number online. I mean, you know, I work for the, for crew, I work for the industry and now I'm here to respond to any question and people can call me anytime.
please when i sleep let me sleep nice you've been watching another edition of yacht crew vlogs right here on yachting international radio my name is ria i have been your host we'll see you again next time Thank you.